A campfire is the most essential thing, not only in survival and bushcraft, but also camping and just overall outdoor living. Everyone loves a campfire. It creates warmth, comfort, and enjoyment for everybody around it. Before we make our campfire and we set up our fire light, we first need to think about material selection. And materials for a campfire can be broken down into three categories. Think of it like this. We have small, medium, and large material, also known as tinder, which is small material, kindling, which is medium-sized material, and fuel, which is large material. When we collect tinder, we need to think about size. Size of this material for smalls or also tinder is going to be toothpick size up to half of a number two lead pencil. So think of a number two lead pencil. If you crack that in half, that's what size you should be. So you could see I pull these right off the tree and they're very small on one end, of course, and they got a little bit thicker, but it's a lot of small material there. And that's gonna be the base of our fire. Kindling should be number two pencil up to about thumb size. So I have a variety of material mixed in here. I have some small stuff and some larger stuff, but most of it is within that range. So thumb size down to a number two pencil is perfect for that medium size kindling. And lastly is fuel. Thumb size all the way up to split out logs. So when you're gathering this, this is what's gonna sustain your fire for a longer term. But initially, that's not gonna be your main concern. It's gonna to be to get all this other stuff going before we start to put our fuel source on. One thing individuals do a lot that you really shouldn't do is process your wood down into very, very small pieces. Something like this that can fit inside your hand. That's way too small. This stuff that I collected right off the tree is just a little bit too big. What I like to tell people is something around one foot in length is perfect. So normally if you grab a clump of uh, sticks like this or even our medium kindling, if you break that in half, it's a perfect size. So about one foot in length is ideal for any campfire situation. Once your material is all processed and ready to go, you need to decide on what your ignition source is gonna be. Today, I actually processed down some fat wood. I'll put a link below to that video if you wanna see how to do that. But any ignition source will work for this. Um, from a bird's nest to fat wood to um, store-bought fire starters. Anything will work fine. What I first like to tell individuals is this. If the ground is really, really wet, you want to put something down there. So you can get some sticks and lay them down, make a little platform. That's going to keep moisture from sucking the heat out of that um, ignition source that you are going to be using. Again, it doesn't have to be anything pretty, just a few sticks down there to keep that um, wetness off your initial flame source. Now, this is called a stacked fire, is what I call it. And I like to teach this, I think this is far superior than any type of pyramid or TP style fire lay because you it allows the individual to examine what's happening with the fire and think about the triangle of fire. Again, heat, oxygen, and fuel is the triangle of fire. And it allows an individual to break down in their mind what's happening with the fire. So if it's burning good, we can add more fuel. If it's not burning good, we can dissect it rather than having to look inside and trying to figure this out through a big clump of mess. So stacked fire, what we do is we take two pieces of our fuel that are a little bit thicker and we put them here. I'm working actually backwards here so everybody can see this. I put my backstop here with my little um, platform in the front. Platform's optional again if it's wet weather. This backstop is going to allow, when I lay on small material, it's going to allow some air to get in between that flame and my, my tinder. What happens if you don't do this and you just lay the material on is many times people will smother out their fire and we don't want that to happen. So this backstop allows something to rest my material on at an angle and it works that much better. So again, I already pre-processed my fat wood so we'll take that and lay that here right in the front, like that. I have my backstop set, grab my ferrocerium rod and strike down into this fat wood and get that burning. Now don't be in a rush, let fire breathe, it needs oxygen, let it breathe a little bit. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start to take a handful of sticks. We don't want to put one stick on at a time. We don't want to put two ton on at a time. One handful is more than enough. We just lay it on top of the fire. 
Now that might seem very simple, but a lot of people struggle with this. You don't want to do this. You don't want to one stick it. You don't want to take one stick and lay it on. One stick and lay it on. We want to put a pile on. Now you can see that flame source is already burning that material, so we're going to put our second pile on. Okay? Just lay it right on top. You're not going to hurt anything. Look at the fire. Watch what it's doing. So it's smoking a little bit. There's a little bit of moisture in that wood, but that's okay. I'm going to just let that fire breathe. You can see that them flames are starting to pop up through there right now, but it's not burning that second pile I put on yet. So now it is. So now what I can do is I can move on to my next level of material, okay? So I'm going to take again a handful, which is less of this kindling, and I'm going to lay that on top. And now I can start to create that dome or pyramid style shape, okay? As I take this material, again, breaking it down to about one foot sections, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I'm just laying that on top. I'm stacking my layers of wood. And take some more, handful at a time, and lay that on. If it's burning really, really well, like it is right now, I know I have a solid base right in there. At this point, I could take more, and I'm comfortable to put that on and press it down a little bit. You just don't want to build this up so high that you don't have density down into the bottom, okay? So if this was up high like that, you want to press it down always. Once all of your small and medium material, all right, tinder and kindling is burning, then start to add your fuel. Remember, fuel, thumb size to wrist size to split wood. You can start to lay that on. If this was an emergency type scenario, the only adjustments you would want to make with this is have extra. So you saw how much wood we used? I'd want to have more wood than this just in case something went wrong. Damp wood's going to burn with this fire lay tremendously. It's going to work really well because you can look at it and decide what's happening. So at this point now, I could start to get my larger sticks. And again, I'm just laying them on. Again, if it's too big, break it down a little bit and start to lay that material on there. And you can see that's starting to create more of a pyramid dome tent type, type shape and you'll be good to go. That's a stacked fire lay. It's what I like to teach at my school. I think that it's just that much easier for people to break down what's actually happening with their fire and evaluate it throughout the entire process. Give it a try, I know you're gonna love it. This is by far the best fire lay method that I've ever worked with, and that's why we teach it here at the school. This was Dan Wolak at Cold Cracker Bushcraft. If you haven't already, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com, and until the next video, stay in the woods, guys.